saw the death. The death is going to be a wee bit different. I was wanting to do the other path um, for the volcano at the other side, but to be honest, my legs are feeling it, honestly. My legs are so sore. I've not been this sore in a very long time, so I've just kind of like, do I do that? Do I really want to do another walk? No. Why the f- There's a pair of shoes over there. Oh, you son of a- But they're at like that bench. Anyway. So today, I have decided, instead, to just drive about Iceland. Um, just the kind of western side, really. And have a wee look at the places that I've not seen before. So, our first visit is at a geothermal hotspot. And you've got all these lovely yellowish deposits of sulphur. Holy f- That used to be a bridge! Now, I'm not so sure if this was originally like another section and then it just kind of fell in and then put the, 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 the gases and that, but is that a little bit twitchy? But I basically, this is so geothermally active. You have these fumaroles, is what they're called. The fumaroles are just hot steaming gas. They come out the ground around 200 degrees Celsius, right? And they deposit minerals such as sulfur in that, right? So sulfur is a yellowish, beautiful crystal that you get um, a mineral. And they actually used the sulphur back in the day to, to um, actually use it for gunpowder. Could they find it? Bye! A wee day. As you can see, the beautiful sulphur deposits there. It did say that this place was meant to have like mud bubbling away, but I can't see any. So we're going back to the car. Danger! Danger. Where's those shoes? All of desiccation cracks. That's when the mud dries out. You end up with that. Little wee cracks that form. Known as desiccation cracks. That's a geology, that's a bit weird. But... So the next stop of the day is the bridge of two continents, right? So this bridge is meant to be placed over the two different continents because it separates not two different plates. Not continents, is it? Anyway. Basically, there's a rift and valley that cuts right through Iceland and it's known as the North Mid Atlantic Rift Valley, I guess. The Mid Oceanic Bridge when it's actually in the sea. But it's basically a spreading. So, like, my two plates are pulling apart from each other. And then, um, it separates two plates, two continental plates. Where am I today? Certainly not Scotland. Maybe it might look like Scotland. It's actually Iceland. Now, I'm actually at a really, really important place because where I'm standing in now, in this valley, in this gorge, whatever you want to call it, right? In this rift valley, actually represents section between two different plates. Is that no fascinating? On this side of me I've got my Eurasian plate which is the biggest plate in the world right and on that side that side I've got my North American plate okay so we're actually standing in a rift valley the whole of Iceland's cut by a rift valley right and the North American plate's actually moving that way. And it's actually recycling at the other side of the world under, like, the Eurasian plate again, like the Pacific Ocean, right? Um, so, aye. Rift Valley. Divergent plate boundary is what it's called in geological terms. And it's moving away from each other, right? They're both moving away from each other and creating these beautiful rift valleys that you see today. Now... Iceland, the majority of Iceland is made of igneous rocks. 90% is igneous rocks. Right. There's no metamorphic rocks, there's subsedimentary rocks, there's volcanic acid sediments, 
and that's it, right? So, right. So, my legs are feeling a bit better today, but they're probably going to die by the end of this 20 kilometer walk. But, I'm going to take part feet to the volcano today. This morning when I woke up, I didn't want to do it, so I changed my plans. And I thought, oh, I'll do something else. I'll go to like the that peninsula that everyone talks about. And then I went to how long it was going to take me to get there. And I was like, I could do a hike in that. Just motivate yourself, Louise. I motivate yourself. And here I am <laughs> on Paffy. What they hope it's not as steep, but not as hard as the other one. But I've read and heard that Paffy is the worst. So did the worst yesterday. This should be a nice, easy hike the day. It's not as warm the day either. It's not 20 degrees Celsius. Five. It's only 15. There she is. My God, there's lava. Real lava. That was happening in Scotland 65 million years ago. Real bloody lava. All right, guys, what's happening? So today I'm next to a basaltic lava flow. Is that not mental? That's coming out the ground at 1,200 degrees Celsius. It's basaltic in composition, mafic. It happens when you have partial melting of the mantle and that seeps through like the crust because it wants to get to the surface of the crust because it's buoyant and light. So it'll work its way through the crust, eventually seeping out at a volcano. And erupting like this. Real lava? Right. You get some fire in there and then someone catches fire and you're like, oh no! Oh no! I'll switch the video if he starts freaking out. What's happening, guys? So, today I'm at the new volcanic eruption in Iceland, and right behind me we have a lava flow. Now, is that not fascinating that that comes out the ground at 1,200 degrees Celsius? It's mafic in composition. It's made of basalt. This type of lava is called <laughs> aha lava. You want to step in there? It's very, very jaggy. And it could probably cut you. But right now, it would probably melt you instead. Second hike done. Not as bad as the first one. I can't really tell what one was worse, to be honest, because my legs, I can't feel my legs anymore. <laughs> no, Paffy is definitely harder. It's got more hills, it's steeper and it's longer, but Paffy, that was all right. I think it was like an hour, an hour and a half to get to it and then an hour and a half to come back, but it was maybe a little bit longer because I spent a lot of time at the lava. Um, aye. No sway up in the day. 